Hey y'all, it is May the 24th of 2020, 2023, and I'm out here, uh, I'm just taking a seat down here, taking a little bit of a rest, and uh, I wanted to shoot this video, it's kind of like on a personal note, uh, but it's also got to do with um, physical recovery, if you will. I was hollering at my man on the internet um, just the other day, and he was talking to me about how, you know, he had lost some weight. I definitely lost some weight recently, and I aims to put it back on, and I think I know exactly how to do it. 30-plus um, pounds of muscle gone, right? And so I had to, like, put that back on slowly and surely. Safety first, I always say. But I plan to do it. He was talking about that he had gotten sick recently. And he had wound up losing some weight and stuff. Uh, the weight he was at was kind of, uh, like a lot of people would say, that would be a little bit overweight. So um, it's kind of good to lose the weight, but it's not good to have a disease or whatever. Get sick and stuff and lose the weight. Now, I'm not a doctor, and I, I'm not about to tell you all what to do in that regard when it comes to your health because... Everybody's got their own different situation. I hope that you find a doctor who you like and trust. And I hope you stay in very close communication with them. I mean, if my little story recently has not proven anything else, you might want to find a physician you like and trust and uh, stay in very close contact with them. And um, so I'm not that. But I do want to mention that um, I'm starting to become experienced in recovery. Uh, this is like the biggest thing I've ever recovered from. And people all in the hospital would talk to me about recovery and uh, that sort of thing. Because, you know, there's people in the hospital to help you get to move. Like, I mean, after the surgery, I could not hardly move. I couldn't get up or stand up. I needed people to really guide me through it. All right. And there's a lot of very helpful people. One thing that they said to me that is really sticking and it's pretty much common sense anyways, but I want to reiterate it, is that you need to get your body moving. Say you got sick and you lost all this weight. Say you just had a surgery and you lost all this weight. So, say you did this and that and whatever, uh, and now you have to climb yourself out of a hole or something like that. You must keep moving. You have to keep moving. And it could be painful. You might say, oh, well, it's painful to do it. All right, the thing is, the more you keep moving, the less painful it is going to be in time. And I got to say, you know, pain is actually a blessing. And people already know this. But I want to reiterate, pain is actually a blessing. Like, for example, um, if you ever have open heart surgery or something like that, they'll crack your chest open. And they'll put it back before you wake up, but it's not back together. It is still all in pieces. And you have to be very, very careful. Uh, it's a long recovery process when it comes to the chest, obviously being cracked open, and it's gonna take a while for it to fuse itself back together. Hopefully it's stronger than it ever was, but it's gonna take time. And also, you know, um, it's gonna take pain. And I'll be here to tell you that there is no pain medication on earth. I've tried a lot of them. I was pumped a lot of them. There's not one that's going to stop you from feeling the pain of your chest having been cracked open. And it's actually a blessing because if, you, if there was a pain medication that would stop that pain, that would be a terrible thing because then you might accidentally crack your chest back open because you don't feel the pain. You're going to feel the pain. It's going to cause you to not crack your chest open again. It is a blessing in that regard. Pain is a blessing. It's hard to recognize that when you're experiencing it. But perhaps something um, helpful to meditate on, that pain is a blessing. That is your body telling you things. There's some people who are born without that gene who can't feel pain. And you might think, oh, that's pretty amazing. Actually, it's a very dangerous thing when you can't feel pain. So it's, you have to take a lot of stuff into consideration, all right? So I wanted to mention that and mention simple motion. 
Like a lot of people don't want to get into exercise. They've never been in an exercise. A lot of people haven't, haven't done it and never really wanted to do it. They look at exercise in general as being very daunting. As something that's full of pain that they don't want to do. I, and I could tell you from personal experience now that, yeah, you can exercise like that. It's pretty awesome. You get a kind of a high off of it from, from really going high intensity. But, but if that's not a thing that you like doing, and I could tell you from personal recent experience that low impact, low intensity exercise is actually extremely beneficial and crucial in a way that you probably never considered before. Like, for example, my chest is still in recovery. It's going to take a long time. And in the meantime, everything I do has to be low impact. All right, for example, before I, I just went on a walk, all right? Uh, it's the first time I've been able to go on to a, a dedicated walk since I've been out of the hospital. I mean, I've been very busy. I've been handling business from when I wake up to when I go to sleep. Safety first. I know everybody worries, but... No, I rest and I take I take breathers and I do everything slowly and calculated. But at the same time, I haven't really stopped since I got out of the hospital because there's many things to do. Right now, I first got the chance to take a dedicated walk. Just walking, taking in the sunshine, um, taking it very easy, walking a certain distance. And then coming back just for the sake of walking. And it felt amazing. Right? Before I did that, I did very, very, very low impact. Simple calisthenics. And you might call some of it isometrics. I don't want to get too complicated. But simple, low impact, low quantity, low volume calisthenics. Especially with the legs because... If you ever have chest surgery, for example, you'll want to work out your legs first because you can isolate that from your chest, not really use much of your chest, you use your legs. And I'm talking about not very much, but you can feel the difference. I lost all my muscle. I'm already feeling the muscle come back. All right, by doing squats, slowly, safely, calculated. Um, you know, isometric squat, uh, calf raises slowly, very, uh, very low impact. I'm not, I can't raise my heartbeat very fast. So if I wanted to do high impact, can't do it. I had to ease on that sort of stuff. And that's how easy it can be, exercise. I mean, check stuff out on YouTube as far as this, like, you don't have to kill yourself you don't have to raise your heartbeat you don't have to break a sweat in order to start exercising and that is for the best uh i forget what else i didn't like some things or i forget their name all right as far as upper body and i want to get that back as soon as possible i lost all sort of upper body muscle i can't really do chest i had to be very careful with my chest but in the meantime, I, I can't do weights, right? I have some weights, but, you know, w uh, working out and stuff like that, if you become more experienced, you realize weights aren't even necessary. Don't ever use weights as an excuse. You shouldn't even be touching weights. What's the point? And here's the thing. You can get just as strong without weights as with weights, All right? So there is no excuses. So I'm here sitting with a broken chest and I just sit on the couch and I flex my forearms for a certain amount of time and then I flex them the other way. I'm not holding no weight. This isn't very hard. I'm just sitting on the couch doing this. Just flex my forearms, maybe half a minute and then switch, flex them the other way. I take my bicep and I flex that. Just by doing this, there's no weight. It's not hard, but you can feel the flex, all right? Change to the other side, flex this arm, you know what I'm saying? Flex my triceps by putting my arm, uh, if you can see, behind my body and just lifting it up and keeping it there. There's no weight involved, but you will flex your tricep. You're going to feel it, 
All right, very simple things. And I want to get up out of here, but I also want to stress walking because people don't want to exercise. People are scared of, about that. All right, but people do want to put on some weight. I would say, you know, right now I'm trying to put on some weight in muscle form. So I'm going out of my way to have t at least two protein shakes a day at the beginning and at the end. And if I can help it, and I got time, I'm going to put a third one in the middle of the day. Why? To gain weight, because I want to. All right? But as far as exercise, you know, uh, I, I got to say it's one of my favorite, and I got time to do it now, is walking. It's walking. It's walking. You might have excuses about you don't want to walk. All right? Walking is one of the most natural easiest things that you could possibly do as a human being and yet and still it's one of the most beneficial exercises that you could ever want to do there's people who don't like running and they want to lose weight walk that's all it's going to take walking and not eating as much as you typically eat eat a little bit less you're going to see you lose weight if you wanted to lose weight you can drink those protein shakes and gain muscle by walking, all right? It's plenty of things, like people like to run, I like to run, but I can't run right now. That might seem daunting, you might not wanna do that. I suggest if you never exercise, don't run. Running is the last thing you wanna do. No, it's not gonna burn weight off. No, you're just gonna kill your knees and you're gonna have a terrible time, all right? Unless you love running, there's no point to running, that's stupid. What you need to do is walk. And if you do that, you're going to lose weight or you're going to gain muscle, whichever you're trying to do. And for that matter, bicycling. I see people, see, you got a professional bi bicyclist. I got to get up out here, but you see professional bicyclists, yeah, they're lean. They have a weird kind of way that their body forms muscles and God bless them, all right? But they're lean and stuff. And I've seen it, all sort of amateur bicyclists. who They get on the bicycle and they fall in love with it. And they originally got on the bicycle, why to lose weight? Maybe because their doctor says so. Okay, and then you notice that those people, they don't lose weight. You'll notice like amateur bicyclists, lots of times they have a gut. Lots of times they're fat anyways, all right? They're not losing the weight because, yeah, they're pumping their legs real hard and their legs get all toned and stuff like that. But you're not gonna lose that weight in your gut. You're not, you're not really going to lose it like that. But you would lose it quicker and more efficiently if you walked. And it would probably be easier to walk anyways. Alright, some insights and stuff. I'm going to be doing some slow, low-impact recovery and stuff for weeks and weeks and, and months and stuff. So maybe I'll share with you all some of the things that I do that's low-impact but guarantee results stuff like that and i'll just maybe show y'all my protein shakes i don't know i'll holla it's may uh 20 something or other i forget 24th 2020 2020 2023 i'll holla at y'all a little bit later